Let me do my part for the group. Yes, you, you lead the group. 8115. 8115. Let's see. Okay. Let me see. 81. Quran.com. What happened with the faces? You got shy with the camera? <laughs> I assume you're putting it back on screen. That's why, like, no, we still. I mean, it's the, the faces gives us the expression. See what's going on. How would you? On. How would you see our faces if you're like you know if you're screen sharing? No, well, I'll see it. Like my my, I have it on there. Wow, we're getting have, technical now. You have two. You have two monitors. Yes, sir. Oh, me, me too. There you go. <laughs> see, this we definitely are related. Too. We definitely are related. <laughs> exactly. I still laugh at people at work who only have one monitor. I'm like, come on, it's 2022. You should have at least three. Three, four. Yeah, I just have like two. Well, I have like two. I'm trying to get a third, but they won't give it to me. So I might just buy my own. Yeah, yeah I got well. mine for I got mine for fairly cheap. I got like two Dell monitors. Like they're like 20, 15 bucks. You know, I don't know what the conversion is in Canada. It's probably like Forty. It's like probably like two dollars more than usual. Yeah, I just noticed that the photo that Zubair takes took. I look like a like a pumpkin with a beard. Uh huh. Don't think so, man. Let me see. All right, guys, we have another guy joining too. Come on, guys. Cameras on, if you don't mind. Let's do that. Let me get some water. There you go. Otherwise, people think I have like robots or something, you know. Welcome. So uh, we have Arsalan going to join us. Let me put the link in the group so people have it. Easy access, less excuses. Copy link. Yeah, Rafid was here last time, I think. But uh, hopefully, yeah. you keep. Yeah, he was. Oh. Oh, Arsalan is here. So, Shu'aib, Arsalan is actually Rahil's brother in law. Oh, oh really? Assalamualaikum, yes. Salam. How are you? I'm good. good. Oh, and actually, his um, mom and your mom are like really good friends. Really? What's a, what's her mom? What's her mom's name? Uh, Seema Auntie. Mm, not familiar. So, My mom, yeah, probably knows. Yeah. Yeah. So, Arsalan, if you ask your mom about uh, Asiapa, she's going to tell you. Oh, Muhammad, right? No, no, Aziz, Shoaib here. Uh, I don't know if you, for me, it's just left of you. Maybe Shoaib, you should just wave. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. My brother from a different mother. And we have Tristan here, who is half hiding. He doesn't look like a convert, but he's a white convert. He has gelled pretty well. <laughs> According to the sheikh in my in my masjid, I'm an I'm Egyptian. I mean, yeah, you're not far off, honestly. You could you could. He said, yeah. So he did this. So the first time we go to the masjid, I meet the I meet the sheikh, I meet the imam, and he starts speaking to me in Arabic, and I'm like, yeah. Sure. And so another brother that I know responds to him Arabic, going no, and I said what? Because he asked if you were Egyptian, and you said yes. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> You can you can pass your Pashto uh, or Afghani, honestly. Like, Sweet, I'll take I think it. So. Yeah. Sweet. And then we have Tadis up there in Calgary. He doesn't like Toronto anymore. Moved away. Uh, no, no, no. That's funny. I'll be I'll be back in yeah. October. In a week or what? No, October. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till October. Cool. Isn't Calgary the Texas of Canada? Apparently, uh, I, I recently found out they have something called a stampede over here. Uh, we yeah, call it Countdown. Y'all stole the Calvary rodeo from us, man. Y'all stole the rodeo from Texas, man. Just plagiarized us. Yeah. Are you from Texas? <laughs> yeah, I'm from Houston, Houston, Texas. He is. He is. He is joining from Texas. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, nice. We call Calgary Cowtown. Yeah, y'all. Okay. Y'all stay like you know copying our style. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. that, yo, I, I ain't Calgarian. <laughs> I ain't that. Calgary has the biggest stampede in Canada. Cloverdale Rodeo and Exhibition, second biggest. Yeah, we have the biggest, I think, in the world. Yeah, in North America, I think you guys do. Yeah, number one. <laughs>
Well, if you're going to do something right, you do it in Texas, right? <laughs> I mean, at least it's cheaper to live here, you know? That's one good thing. I don't know. I don't know if I can live around people with Confederate flags all over the place. I, I mean, no, I and mean, Sugarland is fairly, or Houston, Houston is more of a, uh, it's more good, of a good mix. You know, we have yeah, it's think, Pakistani flags. Yeah, we have, uh, and even in our own uh, sub town or sub city, Sugarland, um, I'd say we, ha it's a, we, I even in my area within a two mile rate, three, four mile radius, there's like four mushrooms. You know, so Houston itself is very, you know, is very, I guess, open to to other religions. It's very liberal compared to the rest of Texas. That's Even Austin, amazing. you know, Austin, Dallas, San Antonio is not not great, but, you know. Nice. Okay, let's get started. And we'll ch continue chatting later. So we're doing uh, chapter eighty-one, words number fifteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's share the screen. Don't turn your cameras off. The screen won't come to eat you up. And I'll, uh, okay. I do like switch between on and off screen. So let's do this. Okay. Okay, so yeah, so we just read the one verse at a time. I mean, depending on how many others, and we'll just circulate and then we'll talk about it. Right? A'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajeem Fala uqsimu bil khunnas il jawari il khunnas Wallayli idha asrasa wa subhi idha tanafas Okay, so let's just do this. So basically in these four verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath by uh, four of his creation, okay? So let's read that. I think we have actually five people, but we'll alternate. So just, just pick your turn and go ahead. 8115. My turn first? Yeah, just, yeah, whoever, it doesn't matter. Somebody go for it. I do swear by the receding stars, which, do I get yeah, yeah, no, just one, one at a time, yeah. Darren, you want to go next? Sure. Severely, I swear by the people. 16. Which travel and hide. Okay. Next. I think so. And the night as it falls. Aziz. Where okay, um, and the day yeah, here, and the by the and the day as it breaks. Okay, good. All right. So now, uh, basically, so sometimes you see that in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala takes uh, oath in different places in Quran that even emphasizes further. Obviously, he doesn't need to take oath. Uh, he doesn't. You know, he's the most truthful. But he, uh, when he takes oath, it even emphasizes further uh, of the statement that is to come, and it also points to his creation. And that's one of the things we talked about, right? A lot of time uh, we have really amazing creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we just take it for granted, right? We may appreciate the human creation and the iPhones and the Macs and the cars and the engines or the aircraft or, you know, the, the megapixels and the camera and the facial recognition and the machine learning and the deep fakes and all that, which are human creation, but we just like, uh, take the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granted. So let's let's focus on that and then see if you have any personal reflection on that. So we have night and day, right? That is like a really beautiful phenomenon, right? I mean, just imagine that if we didn't have that change in our life, right? It's just like all same, same view, same, same sort of transition, no specific night or day, uh, you know, sun coming up, setting and all that stuff. Or, um, what was there before? Uh, the stars, right? Uh, just just focusing on the stars and, and the night and the star. Anyone has any personal reflections with any of those phenomena, like sunrise, sunset, the stars, the sky? Any thoughts on that? Well, the only thing I would say is that if you took a look at the what was that photo of the of the galaxy that came back recently that they saw further than ever before, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, how how does that make you feel? 
Oh, well, it makes me feel very small in the grand scheme of things, but it also, uh, I think it's, uh, it shows you the magnitude of Allah's creation. Okay, anyone else? Anything favorite from the stars to the sunsets to the sunrise? Any observation, any feelings, any story related to it? Not really a feeling, just well, just like like just more like about what Tristan said about the new images. I'd just be thinking like, you know how Allah says like he used to start to decorate, you know, the lower heavens. Okay. So I would just be looking at like, you know, that it looks crazy, the like the colors, the mix and all that. Unless, you know. Cool. Okay. Aziz, Arsala, and Darren, before we move on, any nature reflections that you guys have had? Anything that you saw other than the telescope images, right? Let's let's move on. Anyone that is stargazing this summer, camping? Are you talking metaphorical? Like, are you talking like actual, like no, actual? Yeah, like you know, sometime when you're out there and you're you're watching and you know you you have some sort of experience this year. It's more the underlying thing. It's like you know like how ridiculous. A large, the, like the number of stars are like it's kind of what Tristan's saying, like where you know we're we're looking at how insignificant we really are, and uh, the magnitude of what we're still discovering, and the trillions of stars, you know, even if the one billionth of that had had more life on it, just that, I guess is from that perspective. Cool. Yeah, and I think so. Also, for just uh, to add to that, from a religious law perspective, uh, we as human beings are not supposed to take oath on any other creation of Allah, right? So we can't say, "I swear by my mom," "I swear by my son or daughter," or by my own life. So you cannot, you know, you're not. That's disrespectful for Allah to swear by anything other than Allah. So we don't, we don't swear by the creation. Okay, that that's just something to to keep in mind, inshallah okay so so the what's the statement right uh you know obviously uh, Allah took that those four oaths and then the statement is coming up next which is what he took the oath for uh, okay so in so I'm gonna do one by one so as I stop someone just picks up so we have a good flow inshallah go for 19. Indeed, this Quran is the word of Allah, delivered by Gabriel, a noble messenger, angel. The power held in honor by the Lord of the throne. Okay. Um, so, now here you have, uh, so first of all, the statement was about uh, the Quran, right? That this is this Quran, which is what we're reading, is the word of Allah, uh, but is delivered by angel uh, Gabriel. So uh, it's emphasizing on 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 the authority, the integrity of the Quran itself, right? And that's something really important because I mean, many times if you're reading a book, right? Like, uh, ha has anybody read a book recently? Most of the time, it's not just the content, but it's also about who the author is. Right. And that would motivate you to read the book, you know, based on the bio of the author, what he has done, you know, what what uh, his accomplishments are, people's review and so on and so forth. That's what, you know, creates that sort of uh, desire to read the book. Now, this is a book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is all knowing, all wise. He is the creator. He is the one in whose hands is all dominion and all power. Everything that we seek. Uh, that we desire is totally in his hands right we can work regardless how much how hard we work if allah does not approve it we will not achieve what we want to achieve right and his book is the one that we have and most of the time you know may allah protect us it's just lying up in the shelf somewhere and then you know we are busy reading everything else and watching everything else but has you know really little time to to focus on on the book of allah or even to take time to read the meanings and and, and do reflections so, so I think that's just a really powerful reminder that you know uh, to see what kind of uh, attention we are paying uh, to the Quran. Okay, now how Allah describes it is that owner of the power, right? And then high in rank with Allah. That's talking about the angel uh, Gabriel, the angel Jibril that brought uh, down uh, the the wahi, the revelation to the messengers. And Allah is the one who is the Lord of the. 
throne. So Allah is many different creation, right? So I mean, we were talking about the stars and the galaxy. So, uh, you know, it is described that one of the creation of Allah is the footstool, right? And that's like humongous compared to the entire universe. And then on top of the footstool is the arsh, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's even humongous than the footstool itself. So just imagine like how how powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And just, just focusing on one of his creation, which is the throne itself is like so humongous. Okay, any thoughts on the any of these two verses? Anyone has any reflections or thoughts or comments on this? No, I mean, I did hear, I think by Brother Anwar, Sheikh Anwar, when he's talking about the end times, how eight angels mm -hmm. will carry the throne. It'll take three, three, eight angels to carry the throne of uh, Allah, the Arsh. And the size of these angels is going to be like, to travel from their shoulder to their earlobe is going to take 300 years on a galloping horse. Right. So I've just clicked on Tafsir here, right? And that's another thing that, that is available on Quran.com. So let's see if what what if if they quote any hadith about the arsh, it would be good to see that. Uh, let's see, is it uh, okay? Highest, all right? The throne. Okay, so they don't quote any hadith here about the arsh itself. Okay. Now remember, but you can see like sometimes you can just click on the those three buttons and go on the to see and then you may have like you know uh, other explanation other details about any of the things mentioned in the words okay moving on anyone else any comments on uh what we just read so far on the import okay type obey there in heaven and trustworthy okay so these two things are really very important right uh, so that first of all, like you know, the uh, the trustworthy. This is pointing to the angel. So obviously, he is bringing the the knowledge uh, carefully, and it's it's like not doing any sort of uh, uh, commit any sort of fraud or changing in terms of the wahi. And that's a really one of the very important things that we have in Islam, which is the integrity and the authenticity of the knowledge. Right? That's not something that uh, any other book can actually claim today. Right? So even you know, if you were to go today and look at the Christian's own definition of Bible, the first Testament and the last Testament or go on Wikipedia, you will see that it's not something that even they are claiming that has a, you know, a direct chain between the prophet to the angel Gabriel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, okay. All right, so next thing that Allah Subh'ala says is وَمَا صَاحِبُكُمْ بِمَجْنُونَ And your fellow man is not insane. Okay, so this is talking about refuting the claims of the people, right? Some of the people that, you know, instead of attacking the message, they just went on attacking the messenger to discredit him from being listened to. Obviously, that didn't work, but that was one of the tactics that they used and Allah is, you know, clarifying that, like, look, he's not, a madman he's not something uh you know intellectually deficient but what he is claiming is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself and verse number 23 allah says <laughs> and he did see that angel on the clear horizon Right, so if you know the the story of when uh, when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw the angel for the first time, this is what Allah is referring to here. Let's see if they have actually narrated the story in the tafsir. So, here, uh, yeah. So it's okay. So indeed, uh, meaning that indeed Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw Jibril, who brought him the message from Allah in the form that Allah created him in. And that is his true form, and he has 600 wings. Okay, that's where uh, how he saw him in the clear horizon, meaning clear. This refers to the first scene which occurred in Al Batha, Mecca. This incident is mentioned in Allah's statement. So now they're also relating other verses. So that's one of the things that Tafsir would do, it would connect uh, the verses together. So this is now in chapter 53, verses number 5 to 10. Allah actually talks about the same incident uh, where he says that he has he has been taught by one mighty in power, meaning Jibreel. Uh, 
Zu uh, Mirra, then he rose while he was in the highest part of the horizon, then he approached and came closer and was at a distance of two bows length or less. So Allah revealed to his servant what he revealed. The explanation of this and its confirmation has already preceded as well as the evidence that proves that it is referring to Jibreel alayhi salam. It seems apparent and Allah knows best that this surah, this chapter, at taqweer was revealed before the night journey because nothing has been mentioned in it except this sighting of Jibreel. And it is the first seeing, right? The first time that he saw, the Prophet saw Angel Gabriel. The second sighting has been mentioned in a different chapter, uh, which is chapter number 53. And he saw him a second time near Sidra al-Muntaha, near it is the paradise of abode. And uh, when that covered the low tree, which did cover it. So that's the second time he saw it when he was being, uh, you know, uh, going up uh, to, to the heavens. Okay. So that's something like, you know, if something comes up interesting and you want just want to go into details about it, boom, you can just, just do that as well as you're doing uh, your own reading. And that's one of the things that we really want to encourage that this is just a practice thing uh, to build momentum. But the idea is for us to start doing it on our own uh, on a daily basis as well. Okay. So uh, the next statement that Allah mentioned is, uh, I don't know if we read the translation of that. I don't think we did. Uh, someone go ahead with 24. And he does not withhold what is revealed to him of the unseen. Yes. So that's another thing, right? That, you know, the Prophet is just conveying whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, taught him. And he's not changing it. Uh, he's not making his own additions or subs subtraction. Let's see if there are any comments there. Mm. Apparently not. Moving on. وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ this And this Quran is not the word of an outcast devil. Okay. فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ So what other path would you take? إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ Really, this Quran is only a reminder to the whole world. To whoever, to whoever of you will take the straight way. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَن يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ but you cannot will to do so except by the will of Allah, the Lord of all worlds. Fantastic. Okay, so there's a lot of things to unpack here. Uh, first thing I want to quickly mention, uh, this word, Rabb, which is usually translated as Lord, it's a very powerful word and it actually includes a lot of different attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, and from there are that Allah is a creator. Okay, so he is the creator of everything. So even when we talk about direct creation, like human beings or mountains or fruits, he's a direct creator of that. But things like phones and cars and all that is also something that's attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's an indirect creator of that because he is the one who created the sources, whether it be a raw material, the human beings that design those things, or even the ideas, right? Something to think about, like where do ideas come from? Are they an inspiration of Allah subhanahu, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or are they totally independent? Because if you reflect on it, sometimes ideas come when people observe things from the nature, right? Things uh, from birds, from animals, um, and, and other phenomena in, in the nature, that's where people observe. And many times the idea also come in when someone is trying to do something else, prove something else, and they go away and they come and they see a totally different result. And Allah inspires them to make the connection and that idea. And that, that's how, you know, uh, things, things happen. And, you know, ideas are created or experimented and so on and so forth. So the word Lord includes within itself the, the concept of being a creator. And then the second thing is being an owner, right? So for example, you know, if, if I were to lend my car to someone for a day or month, if I'm traveling, I'm still the owner of the car from a, from a worldly perspective. So similarly, Allah is the owner of everything. And what we have or what any human being has, including our own body parts like eyes and ears and feet and hands are a trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the original and a true owner, we have it as a temporary thing. And lastly, you know, 
even though you may be an owner of something, you cannot really protect it, right? So anything can happen. Someone can steal it, can break down. But Allah is such a creator and owner that he has full authority on his creation. He nurtures it. Nothing can harm or uh, you know benefit the creation except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that to happen. Um, and, and that is obviously backed by his own wisdom. Is that, is that concept clear, the, the, the definition of Rabb and how deep it is? Questions, comments on that? Okay, so there's a very interesting thing here that's happening about free will, okay? So first thing, Allah is saying that, look, this book, I mean, the whole chapter, I mean, the, what we discussed today was about the importance of Quran, where it comes from, and how valuable it is. And the purpose it is to remind humanity. As we get distracted, as we get pulled in different direction, it's a reminder for the entire universe. Now it's up to us. We can keep the book closed, not approach it, or approach it and not understand it, or understand it and not implement it. That's, these are all different choices. But what Allah is saying is that whoever wants can use it to find the straight path and walk on it. However, yes, you have a choice. However, you cannot have that choice unless Allah also has that choice. Okay, so so that's a very interesting concept. Before I explain that further, let's let's see what they are saying about it in the in the book of Tafsir. All right. Meaning whoever seeks guidance, then he must adhere to this Quran for verily it is salvation and guidance. There is no guidance other than it. Okay. This means that he, that the will is not left to you all so that whoever wishes to be guided and he is guided and whoever wishes to be astray, then he goes astray. Rather, all of this is according to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is the Lord of all that exists. It is reported from Suleiman bin Musa that when this ayah was revealed, Abu Jahl said, right, so that's one of the, the top enemies of the Prophet وسلم, the matter is up to us. If we wish, we will stand straight. And if we do not wish, we will not stand straight. So Allah revealed, and you cannot will unless that Allah wills, the Lord of all that exists. This is the end of the tafsir. Okay, so, so that's a very uh, interesting thing, right? That look, we are, first of all, we are responsible for our own actions. Okay. The second thing is our actions, regardless of whatever that action is, will not have the final impact or will not have the final result unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows that. Okay. And this is really, really a powerful concept. Okay. So you can put in all the effort to be rich or to be financially stable or financially independent, or you can take all the protection for you not to get sick, you know, wash your hand 50 times a day, you know, uh, take all the precaution and stay away from people but if allah wants you to be sick you will get sick right but you and i are responsible for our actions so if we are being you know careless if you're being uh you know carefree and we're not we're just taking risky steps and doing risky behavior then we are responsible for that so i'd like to use the example of imagine like there's two people you know two different per people driving a car right one is drunk and the other one is just driving properly he or she is sober following all the rules and boom, they're driving and a car accident happens and both of them die, right? Now, obviously, both of them die, but one is going to be responsible and the other one is not going to be responsible. Uh, now, imagine they don't die, you know, just a car is damaged or, you know, something happens or, 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 or less than nothing happens, right? Both of them just drive safely and they get home. The person who is, who is driving ir irresponsibly is still sinning and is still accountable in, the, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So regardless of what the outcome is, right? So there was no personal fault of the one who was driving properly, but you know, Allah had written for that person that you will die today and you will die with an accident, you know, based on whatever wisdom he had and he has the authority and the right to do it because life belongs to him. He owns the life, uh, you know, uh, so there was no, you know, uh, fault of the person driving properly. However, from the choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made it happen. And the person will not be responsible for it. But the person who is driving irresponsibly under influence, you know, he or she will be responsible for the act or the murder uh, that they committed. So that's just something really important to see that, look, what we are accountable is what's in our control and we should do the best of what we have. But we should also realize that the results are not 
dependent on our effort alone they are also dependent on what allah wants to give or not give us all right so i've talked a lot i would like you guys to comment and see what you reflect uh, about these things how you relate it to, to scenarios that you face or your friends face and see like how it can practically uh, benefit inshallah so i think for me like i was listening to what you're saying about Oh, are we going on to this? No, no. So no, I'm just I'm just putting it up there, right? Oh. So these could be some questions to think about, right? What do we learn about Allah from this verse? You know, uh, what kind of people is Allah talking about? What kind of qualities are Allah, is Allah talking about? Uh, which qualities do Allah life like? You know, uh, what is Allah reminding us to focus on? Is there a promise in this verse from Allah? So these are some, you know, uh, uh, facilitating questions, if you will. That if if you read the Quran, these if you if you reflect on these things they can then help you uh, reflect and come up with you know your own uh, reminders inshallah okay so let me just uh, think uh, stop sharing so now I, I would like you guys to comment even if you're just repeating each other that's fine where did the beautiful faces go all right go ahead Tristan. well i thought for me it was uh, i thought what you were just talking about one of the things that struck me was two things one recently i've been hearing a lot about things do not happen unless allah wills it things that do or do not happen so if something bad happens Allah wills it if it's good thing Allah wills it and that's just the way it is but the other one was part of part of that is I think also having trust in Allah at the same time and part of that trust is brings me to the hadith that talks about um trust 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 in Allah but tie your camel mm. right and that's when you were talking of those two things came to mind Fantastic, yes. And and also when you say like, you know, good things and bad things, like there's no bad thing per se, right? It's, it's just a relative. Right. You can say like easy or painful, right? right. But I mean, sometimes right. painful thing can actually be a good thing and, right. and an easy, comfortable thing can actually be a bad thing from a results perspective. Yeah. So I think all things that happen, be it one or the other, is obviously at the will of Allah, right? It won't happen if Allah doesn't will it, it won't happen. Right, and and there's another place in Quran where Allah says, "Wa nablukum bishari wal khairi fitna." That we test you with evil and with good, right, or pain and comfort, and that's both situations are a trial. Okay, and anything else, Tristan? No, nope, that was that was kind of where I was going. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any anything that you you uh, picked about, you know, uh, focusing on again these questions about Allah, right? What did you learn about Allah from these verses today? What did I learn about these verses? Or, or, or it, it doesn't have to be something new, right? As I said, it's a reminder. It's something that helps us condition ourselves, right? A lot of people, when, when we read or watch or consume personal development content, most of the time there's nothing new. It's a, it's, it's, it's a reminder and cons constant topics that kind of condition you and keeps you motivated sort of thing. That I... I only okay. got as far as what I just related. I didn't go okay. that direction. All right. Anybody else? Yeah, I got two things. Mm -hmm. First of all, well, one of them is a question, but it's about the same thing. It's basically how, like, like as you ref like as I reflect and like, when, especially when I give dawah, you know, mm -hmm. like, usually like Andrew Jabril, you know, he he gives the message to most people, you know, like, and. It was Allah's wisdom to not, I guess, directly give the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the message directly. Instead, it was given to him through the angel Jibril. And so, like, it shows a pattern in the way Allah presents his uh, message to the, his uh, uh, disciples. You know, he uses Jibril to send a message. You know, if if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a quote-unquote naysayer, like a, a false prophet, whatever, he would have probably made the mistake of saying Allah directly told me th this and that this is how I'm bringing the message, but instead it shows like Allah's history. He he shows he gave the message to Andrew Jabril, and then Jabril sends it to the Prophet You know, so that's the one thing I picked up. But I also had a question about the verse that says that. You know, like how do you differentiate the difference when it says honorable messenger between the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Jabril? Because the like looking at it, it could be that the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam conveyed the message to the people. Right. Yeah. And, and that's fine. Right. Some that, that's one of the beautiful things. Right. Sometimes uh, a words can may, mean both things. Right. And both of the meanings are true. 
So that in that yes. scenario, the angel, the scholars explain that well, you, you take it to mean both things, right? You don't need to say okay, it means one and not the other because both things are actually true statements and good observation there. Okay. And and sometimes people say no, it means this because of X Y Z. It's you know, and and what are the verses after? It's more likely that it points to this. Or people, another group of scholars would say, well, why don't we take both meanings, right? If both meanings are included. <laughs> Okay, good. All right, next. Who's the next brave guy? Shuaib. I'm not brave. You're not ready? Okay. Arsalan. Yeah, so basically two things. What one was that when it was said that every idea was also from the Lord, the Lord is has been in control of everything and control of everything. So this gives me a comfort. In this time, I'm looking for an idea for my new product uh, related to fintech. So, so not able to come up with a quicker idea or something or not able to start quickly was stressing me enough. And after listening to this thing is that it's comforting that all the things are from Allah. So at one point when he will, there will be an idea. But it, this doesn't need me to not do anything. I should be doing every time everything to make it happen. But yeah, I have to also be not too stressing as much about it because if it's not happening, it's from Allah. But yes. I need to be doing it. Another thing was okay. I wanted to also understand the fact. The, so, so I always had in mind that if I'm doing some, if something is happening bad with me, that it is due to something bad i have done before or something bad i'm going to maybe something relation to it so it, i think the last verse was something i forgot it uh but it was something related to whatever is happening with you is also linked to something like that so i was like uh if any clarification for this but if everything is happening by the will of love then does it equate with what bad I am doing with other people? Okay. Uh, yes. So, so our uh, okay. So that's so. Let me one second. Where is that? Eighty one. Okay. So sorry. Which ones were you were thinking about that connection there? I I, I really forgot that. But this was okay. the idea. I mean, it was related to something. Whatever is happening with you is also. Of will or also what Allah is planning, right? Uh, to do. Yeah. Okay, so I think so. This is really good. So first thing that it was Arslan picked up, and I think this is what we want to focus on, right? So see here, right? And and this is a reminder all the time. So the question of what do I learn about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala here in this surah or in in, in the verses that we read today? So firstly is here, right? Rabbul Alameen. I think that's a really important reminder that look, because sometimes we start feeling two things. One is we think that we have a lot of things in our control. And then the second thing we feel is that I'm entitled to this thing. I should have this much money today. And I should have this thing in my in life today. And why don't I have it? And sometimes this thing leads us to actually be upset with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and start disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what shaitan did because he thought I, in his mind, that I should be better than Adam our father and you know he should not be made better right because you, we just start thinking that we are entitled and the second thing sometimes we think is you know uh being understanding that allah is the rob because if you truly understand it then you would not disobey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. right because you wouldn't try to do something by disobeying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you know that allah can prevent you from having that thing or maybe you have it but it's not blessed so imagine if you if you're going after a big client or an investor or even your boss and you're trying to do something, you know, to, to get a promotion or you know bonus and what have you. You wouldn't do it at a cost of cost of you know crossing the boundaries of your boss or cheating him and what have you, because that thing would just totally nullify it. The second thing about what he was saying there uh, is also very important. But it's a fine balance between us being lazy and not working hard enough to 
uh, just being upset with ourselves. How come I don't have an idea or how come I failed on this idea? And that happens when we don't realize that, you know, if, if we do not succeed in our goal today, it may not necessarily be because I was lazy or I wasn't working hard. It may be a choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's just something uh, really important. And there's another uh, hadith in which the Prophet actually clarifies sallallahu alayhi wa that he says, Ihris alama yanfaw, you know, be diligent and work hard on what's beneficial to you. So don't waste your time. Don't be like, you know, sloppy. However, at the end of this hadith, it says that, you know, if, if something were to happen, right, the result uh, that you are not happy with, then don't delve into, oh, this and that, had I done this, had this has happened, remember to say this. Uh, so he gives a very beautiful conditioning statement, you know, Allah has decreed and he does what he wills. So that's the prophetic uh, guidance about it. Now, the other question which you mentioned is, it's actually a very deep thing and there's no clear answer for that is if some if if uh, you know yes there is a statement and there is a thing about that if we sin if we sin and if we disobey allah there is a very high chance that allah will prevent us from having some sort of a blessing that we would have received otherwise so our sins actually block bl blessings and favors of allah on falling from us however that's not an absolute thing because sometimes there's also another verse in the quran which says that you know when people disobey allah allah gives them more Right, and that's actually that's actually a punishment in disguise. Mm. If Allah blocks something from us, that's actually a blessing in disguise. That's what we, I was mentioning to Tristan earlier, like you know what is good and bad. So what happens is, look, you know, sometimes Allah blocks something from us, or we you know some we lose something, an opportunity, or something goes wrong in our life, and that awakens us, like you know, and we we take charge and we're like, you know what, I gotta take care of my situation, right? And and, and that's a blessing in disguise. And for some other people, and we know there are many people who are corrupt, they are tyrants, they are like, you know, uh, making corruption left, right, and center, but Allah is giving them more power, more fame, and so on and so forth, until they die, and boom, that's when they're snatched. So even though they're getting all these things, this is actually, a, a, you know, a punishment in disguise because they will never be awakened. Now, you might, it's kind of something similar to like, you know, um, you know, if I were to use this example, let's say someone is unhealthy, right, and they're like eating unhealthy, and they're just like smoking, and you know pizza and coke and sugar all the day and then boom they have like heart attack and they just die that's one scenario right uh the second scenario is they you know they have a minor heart attack but that becomes an awakening call for them and they fix their life so so that's just something to remember but yeah in general both things ag exist and and the latter one in which you disobey allah and allah gives you more of dunya is actually a punishment in disguise Cool. All right. Um, so Tadis talked about it. Darren or Aziz, any comments before I talk more? Uh, yeah, I, I, I mm -hmm. do have a, just Please. one, I guess. It's more, I found in my experience, and uh, you know, obviously I'm relatively new to this, but I found in my experience with people that I speak with where I find some people don't really take accountability for actions, and they just say it's Allah's will. Like, so that's why I think there could be I guess kind of to your point is uh, where something could be all as well, and it could be something that you, you know, like I find that some people interpret that a little too literally, and they think they can just literally sit back and do nothing, and Allah mm -hmm. will sort everything out for them. But I, I don't subscribe to that, so I, and I don't think that's what's being said. It's just what exactly. I found in my experience that I have found people that misinterpret or misunderstand. They say, well, it's Allah as well. And they just sit back and do nothing and expect people to run around in the background and do stuff for them. Uh, and that's just in my experience. So I was just kind of curious uh, yes. more have you experienced that and your thoughts on that, actually. Yes, yes. So actually, this is, yeah, so from an Islamic instruction perspective, it's very clear that you have to put in the effort, right? So we talked actually about four things today that actually emphasizes that we have to take effort. One is here, Allah says that whoever wants, should take this reminder and follow the straight path, right? So that's again, encouraging us to take action. The second thing that we heard today was what Tristan mentioned about the narration which in which a man came and he basically left his camel outside the mosque or uh, I'm not sure where exactly, probably it was mosque if I'm not mistaken. He didn't tie the camel, right? He said, okay, I trust Allah, Allah will protect my camel. So the prophet told him what Tristan uh, said is to tie your camel, right? Do you take your measure, right? Don't leave the camel untied. You tie it, you, you secure it. And then if it happens something, then you know it's from Allah. But 
if, if you if you are careless and you don't secure your camel and then the camel is lost then you are responsible right because you didn't do what you can do so it's really discouraged to do this sort of scenario where what you were mentioning darren is to like just just not do anything and that's why in many in pretty much every concept in islam you need you have these two extremes right so one extreme is okay i'm not going to do anything if allah wants it will happen the other extreme things that it's just me whatever i do will happen i don't need to worship allah i don't need to take time for prayers i don't need to stop i don't need to think which ways are permissible or impermissible halal or haram i'm just going to make in my effort right so that's the other extreme there now and this also reminds me to the other point from our salam there not so so i said that look if you do something bad or you disobey allah it's there is a chance that allah will punish you in this world and there's a chance that Allah will not punish and he will just give you more. However, the same thing also applies on the contrary. Sometimes you may have some sort of a pain in this world. Something goes wrong in, in life or you know, it's not really wrong. Wrong is a subjective word anyways. But something becomes painful in this life. It doesn't mean that the person is disobeying Allah. right? Because sometimes, you know, someone gets into an accident and we think, oh, this may have must have happened because the person committed a sin. That That's not true either. Right. I mean, the best of the creation, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they suffered and they went through so much pain in this world. That didn't mean that they were disobeying Allah. Exactly. The, the prophets were the most tested ones. So I mean, exactly. they, they weren't doing that bad thing. So that means that having a bad thing is not something like, I mean, it's again, it's subjective or as far as my knowledge is, if you are doing a sin, the outcomes are not yet determined. I mean, right. It has to be a bad thing for sure. I mean, yeah, that's what important. It, like this, the sins will have bad in general. Sins will have bad outcomes. The timing is not confirmed, right? So it may be tomorrow. It may be something going on into your heart. It may yeah. be ten years from now. It may be after right. death. Right? I think it more affects your spirit, where exactly. your soul is like stinky. When you are sinning more, you your soul feels more. I mean and things up like that instead of having a physical and having an unhealthy soul is itself a, a bad thing to happen to your that's my point yeah so the criteria is basically when when a situation happens to us whether comforting or painful you know it's like a, a tennis ball or tennis surf thrown at us or the cards being dealt to us the criteria is how are we reacting that's the true criteria of seeing if it's if it's something beneficial or not if it's getting you close to Allah, if it's making you work harder, become better, great. Otherwise, you know, something may happen to you. Allah may bring big, a big blessing, you know, kids, job, business, clients. But we are going far away from Allah. That's that's a clear sign that, hey, you know what? <laughs> that's that's a punishment. I need to, you know, uh, tweak my behavior there. But I mean, that doesn't mean that having more money and more clients is a bad thing. That's what all people want to support it. I mean, it's, 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 it's the reaction that might bring you towards Allah, and if it's not, then it's a time for a reflection. Another reminder that look, Allah is blessing you, so don't so be grateful. Exactly, right on. Okay, I'm gonna step away for Aisha. Like you guys are welcome and actually encouraged to stay on and maybe just like hang out and chill and talk. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll you guys next. I'll step out to Aisha. Thank you guys. It was very nice talking to you all, and it was very healthy communication. I mean, the event. And hopefully next week we'll join too. Shalom. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Thank you. Take care.